Hi, so I'm going to be giving you, uh, I'm going to be going through an example of a 25 mark question for the edXLA um, examination today. Um, I am going to make a separate video for exam techniques for section A and B. Um, section A, obviously, probably the easiest, the fastest section, 25 mark, it should take much less than 25 marks. Funnily enough, a lot of people think section C, the essay 25 marks is the most important. I, it's not, it's the data response. The data response is so much more difficult, in my opinion, to guarantee marks for. I personally think with the 25 mark section C, you just follow the structure, you know, make sure that you, you're not doing anything um, strange, as in like you're not forgetting to analyze, you're not forgetting to app apply, and you're not forgetting to evaluate, and you should be totally, totally fine. So yeah, let's go through this one. So this one is in 2015, a report by Public Health England recommended the imposition of a 20% tax on the sale of soft drinks that contain high levels of sugar, evaluate the microeconomic effects of such a tax. The first thing you notice is microeconomic effects. Love this. As soon as you see that, choose this question, 100%. That's what I would do. Um, in terms of the marks where it's coming from, obviously you've got your KAA, knowledge four marks, application four marks, analysis eight marks. What you should take from that isn't that you have to like do one mark here, one mark here, one mark here. What you should take from that is that half of those marks are analysis. So that means the majority of your writing has got to be analysis. If you put it in that kind of way of thinking, right, then technically evaluation is the biggest, right? So technically the most should be evaluation followed by analysis and then knowledge and applications should simply be um, contextualizing for sugar and soft drinks or for definitions, okay? So that should roughly third, 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 right? So what I've done is I've kind of color coded a little bit um, just to make it clearer. So I think I've done I mean, not perfectly, but um, the red is supposed to be uh, knowledge, um, and then the green is analysis, the blue is application, and the pink is evaluation. Um, I don't know why the green color suddenly changed, I'm sorry, I, I apparently did not pay enough attention. However, um, some parts of the evaluation, I'm going to say in a minute, but I think could be considered evaluation and vice versa. Uh, but what you can see is, I, I think that's fairly even, no? Should we, I'm going to zoom out a little bit. But I would say that's pretty much like, if you combine the blue and the red, I would say that's pretty equal to how much green there is and then how much pink there is. So yeah, I, I, I hope that makes sense, like you should be able to recognise where these marks are coming from, right? So anyway, microeconomic effects, um, first of all, I have made like a video that organizes it slightly better, but essentially this is what I put. You split it into consumers, producers, workers, government. That's the first thing I would do, write that down, and then immediately write down the sub points, if you have a read of these guys, uh, and these guys, and then immediately contextualize and then try and highlight the ones that you think will be most important. So I'm thinking sugar, and it's a tax, and it's an indirect tax, so I'm definitely gonna discuss that. I'm also definitely going to discuss these three points. These ones are kind of a given, right? But um, same with producers, I'm definitely going to discuss investment and cost because it's a tax and it always affects profits as well. Um, workers, productivity is going to be a must for sugar and soft drinks, perhaps wages or employment levels. Job stability, not so much, I would say. And then this is going to be very important, tax revenue, government failure, and also externality, negative externality of consumption reduced, yeah? So I would kind of do that, and then I would think immediately, okay, what kind of context am I thinking about? Inequality, could I, because you know, you can't just say, it can't be a general tax, it has to be soft drinks and sugar. So let me show you what I've done anyway. Intro, a 20% tax is an indirect ad valorem tax. That's red, obviously knowledge definition. The imposition of such a tax will have both negative and positive effects on consumers, producers, workers, government and society. Super pointless sentence, I'm gonna do it anyway because I like to show them that I have a structure um, and that I'm gonna specifically focus on microeconomic effects. Now, definition, an ad valorem tax. I'm identifying the effect of it, so it's gonna increase the cost of production for soft drink producers. It's super easy to just put in soft drink producers rather than producers and you get a little bit of context causing a pivot of the supply curve from S1 to S2 and figure one. Identifying the effect is knowledge, but the actual analysis, the diagram itself is actually analysis, which is why it's in green. So this causes an increase in price from P1 to P2, Q1 to Q2, consumer surplus for, producer surplus for, here's the government tax revenue box. If they mention a tax, subsidy, externality, maximum price, minimum price, whatever, you have to explain the diagram first, okay? So I would be putting the diagram here, diagram figure one. So this is your basic diagram. 
Um, yeah, okay, so for soft drink producers, you're gonna see that I start every KAA paragraph with four consumers, and then it's gonna be government failure, and then it's gonna be four workers. Just get into the habit, you know, it's just it's nice and uh, uh, simple, yeah? So for soft drinkers, I'm identifying the effect first. So this increase in the cost of production, or maybe I should put this tax, which causes uh, an increase in the cost of production, will cause a reduction in profit. So there's my identification. The analysis, the green, is the mechanism of why that happens. So sugar is an ingredient in the production of soft drinks, so it'll increase the average variable cost. Again, you can just, if you put AVC instead of AC, it's just that little bit of extra high level complex knowledge. And we can see this in figure two, so my second diagram. If there's a place to put a cost revenue diagram, I'm putting it in because it's immediate points. Um, and if you're shifting ABC up to ABC2 causing profit fall, that is more complex because you're splitting up ABC and AC. So if you can do that, nice, you know. Falling profits means that soft drink product producers may be forced to make cuts in other areas. I'm then going to do a little bit of application here. So this could cause the quality of the product to fall if they decide to make cuts in quality of other ingredients such as flavorings or in the materials used for the aluminium can. So in this case, I am um, contextualizing it instead of just saying cut in cost, I'm focusing it on the actual related to soft drinks and sugar, which I think is uh, quite a nice, easy way to put in some application when you're not entirely sure what to put. Um, here's my evaluation now, which again, this part I thought it could be considered green or pink. So I would say if the examiner thought I have enough application analysis, they could consider this evaluation. If not, it would just be analysis. But look, there may also be a falling level of investment as investment is likely carried out using profits. This means future products will also be lower in quality. Ultimately, we can become less competitive internationally and reduce the level of exports. What you'll notice is I'm really trying to tie in as much theme one, two, and three as possible. It's holistic, right, these papers now. They don't do AS anymore, yeah? So be really careful and make sure you are including as much info as possible from all of the economics that you've studied, yeah? Right, evaluatory paragraph. So identify, even within the evaluation, you see, I'm going to, on the other hand, if the tax is imposed, soft drink producers may respond by, in fact, investing money, and then here's some application, into the innovation of soft drinks which contain less sugar, given the significant 20% tax, here's my evaluation, this is quite likely and therefore will be beneficial for consumers' health as they'll be consuming less sugar. Alternatively, the soft drinks industry is most similarly similar, it's alternatively, I probably should put however, right? But anyway, uh, the soft drinks industry is most similar to an oligopoly where few firms dominate the market space, such as the Coca-Cola company, nice application, and so we'll have a high proliferation of brands. They are most likely to offset any losses made from high sugar drinks by profits made in other low sugar products. So price and quantity consumed of high sugar drinks may stay the same. They could also just take them out from the range, reducing utility. Can I really draw your attention to um, how many times I'm saying the words and so, and so, or something along those lines, so uh, let me just, um, okay, here we go, so, um, and then, uh, there may, okay, I guess, okay, so the similar sort of thing, so this could mean, uh, falling profits means, um, this could cause, uh, this could make, this could reduce, there may also be, you know, and then here as well, right? Uh, in fact, investing money, therefore, um, alternatively, da, 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 they are most likely to, you know, um, they could also just remove, which could lower, lower the range, so reduce utility. So can I just draw your attention to how often I'm saying, and so this could cause, this could mean, this could verb something, yeah? So that is how you would check to see if you're doing enough mechanism analysis. If you're not, if you're, if it's all just looking like, you know, uh, without any of these, and so therefore carrying on, da 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 da. If you're looking at sort of like two in a paragraph, that's not enough, okay? That's really, really not enough. You really wanna have like, if it's a developed point, all talking about the same point, you kind of want at least like five, six sort of connectives that are saying this causes, this causes, this causes, this causes. That's what they really mean by mechanism, okay? 
Right, so for consumers now, the increase in price of soft drinks will lead to falling consumption of the good, identifying the effect in analysis. They are likely to sub away to other drinks and then application containing less sugar, such as tea or water. Such a nice, easy thing to do, but really makes a difference. This will improve their health. And so, can I just, I'm going to just count along again, likely to sub and so increase their standard of living. Again, the reason this is important is you're finishing the thought. You could, I could have just left it here, right? This will improve their health but I'm talking about microeconomic consequences. Improving health is not a microeconomic consequence. Standard of living is the microeconomic consequence, which is why I'm saying, please guys, look at the microeconomic effects that I'm talking about here. You are trying to prove these things. You're not trying to prove health or whatever, yeah? So whatever your paragraph is, link it back to one of these things that I've given you up there, yeah? Um, where were we? Okay, however, indirect taxes are regressive as they tax low income individuals proportionally more. Da, 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 da. This could therefore lead to increasing inequality. There's my microeconomic effect. And so a lower standard of living for some if they continue to consume soft drinks. There is also a fall in the level of negative externality of consumption here, as not only do consumers have better health, but this means a lower probability of serious obesity related health problems in the future. I could just leave it there, but that's not my microeconomic consequence, right? This will reduce the strain on the NHS and so reduce opportunity costs of government spending on healthcare. That's my microeconomic consequence, okay? Always think to yourself, have I stopped my sentence too early? Because um, that's again one of the most common errors that I see in all of my um, students' writing. You know, why, guys, did you stop the sentence there? Do you think that's a microeconomic consequence? I don't think so, yeah? Okay, and then evaluation. Furthermore, a healthier workforce is likely to, you know, you're going to see a lot of likely to be more productive uh, economic consequence, and so could lead to an increase in the capacity of the economy. This effect can be seen in figure three. You can see I'm going to, I have three diagrams in here, I think. If there is an air place to put a complex diagram in, diagrams speak louder than words. Even if you just have the diagrams, you're probably going to get half the marks, yeah? Um, <clears throat> where the area ABC indicates a reduction in welfare loss as the size of the next negative externality has fallen, shifting MSB outwards to MSB2. What you'll notice is every time I mention a diagram, right, I am explaining it inside the paragraph as well. I'm not just going to name drop my diagram and walk away, yeah? However, the incidence of the tax, which is dependent on PED, is important. Soft drinks are likely to be price inelastic as they contain sugar, which is addictive. This would mean the incidence of tax would be borne more by the consumer. And so you can see again, here's my microeconomic effect. Quantity demand will fall proportionately less compared to the price increase, so the health benefits may not be realized. I, I might even be super obsessive with it and say, and therefore my utility may not increase or whatever, or my standard of living may not increase, you know? Okay, there is a strong possibility of government failure where intervention into the market leads to an overall welfare loss with raising a 20% tax on sugar. Collecting and regulating the tax may have high administrative costs as there are many soft drink producers of varying sizes. The larger soft drink producers may also remove products from the country, in which case no tax revenue would be collected at all. Could also lead to a black market where they're sold but not reported. As you can see, this is quite clearly the weakest paragraph, which is why it's at the end. Make sure strongest paragraph first and then weaker as you go back. So if there's one that you're really confident on, that comes first, okay? Um, it's just general, isn't it? I mean, it's a bit of evaluation. Just was worried I didn't have enough. But I, could I get away with just doing the other paragraphs? I think so, yeah? Um, Again, I wouldn't actually include this in the real thing. I think I'd probably just go with the t first four that I wrote, yeah? But I'm just gonna tell you anyway. For workers, the higher price of soft drinks will lead to a fall in demand for soft drinks, and also for workers as there is derived demand for labor. There could also be a fall in demand for workers in the sugar industry if there is a fall in demand for sugar as well. So the overall level of employment in the economy may fall. Um, yeah, so I'm linking it, as you can see, again, Clock my last um, sentence everywhere, tax revenue falling, negative externality, so social society, um, this consumer quantity demanded not changing, reducing utility, uh, reducing level of exports, every single thing is focusing last sentence and first sentence is a microeconomic consequence, yeah? However, as mentioned above, the productivity of workers may increase due to improved health. If this is the case, then the cost of labor relative to capital may fall, leading to substitution of capital for labor, thereby increasing the level of employment. Um, yeah, so again, you can see, you know, fall leading to increasing. And I just some random, I don't know why I put that in. In software production, there is a high level of automation because mass-produced generic 
etc. I don't know. Um, not necessary, yeah? I haven't done the judgment sentence, which I should do, so I'll do something like, you know, the microeconomic effects could be overall positive for this tax. Depends entirely on the PED or something like that. Just really nice and short, yeah? Okay, that was pretty fast. I kind of ran through that. If you want to slow it down and just read each paragraph bit by bit, but really, as I said, please memorize these microeconomic effects. Not every 25 mark question is like this, but if you get a 25 mark microeconomic effects question, you can get 25, I promise, one. You can get 23 plus, yeah? It's not that, it's not impossible. You just think step by step, make sure you put in enough of each. Don't think about it as ticking off one mark knowledge there, one mark knowledge there. You know, you're thinking about proportionately of your essay. A third is knowledge and application. Application, so contextualizing it, identifying, answering the question essentially. A third is analysis, so that's going to be your mechanism explaining so, therefore, etc. And a third, or a little bit over a third, is evaluation. So, however, furthermore, looking at different cases, I think analysis and evaluation, evaluation should have just as much mechanism. So, again, they could be seen for either. And then diagrams, beautiful complex diagrams, are your best friend for an economics exam because they're really fast. So, if you had like, let's say, 10 minutes left at the end, chuck in a few diagrams and explain it really briefly, half the marks, I promise you, yeah? Um, especially because diagrams count as analysis as well. And they may be even evaluation actually if you manipulate it well enough, yeah? Okay, I hope that was useful for you. As I said, I will make a section B because I, I think section B is so much more important. These 25 mark essays just, as long as you, I think once you realise what you are looking for, it can be, it can be pretty doable. So. Um, I will go through a couple more really common 25 mark essays at some point, but the next one I'm going to focus on the section B.